right, guys, welcome to the guest life, episode four. We have Jay Zaccato in the uh, in the room here. We're really excited to have him on board. Um, just to go over why we're doing this podcast, we're giving back to the community. We're giving back to the you know the podcast world and you know YouTube. Um, one of the things we want to do is is really showcase the entrepreneurial life, what it's like, you know, um, share some stories, take some of those assumptions out of the industry. I know a lot of people have assumptions and uh, me personally, you know, coming in without any knowledge thinking, you know, oh, he must be doing that because of this or she must be in that position because of that. But um, giving a positive spin on it and really getting into the nitty gritty of like how hard it is to be in an industry, um, being an entrepreneur, being young or being educated and, and really showcasing some of the great talents in the city. So thanks, Jay, for coming on board. Thanks for having me, man. It's an honor. Yeah, we're uh, a little bit about Jay. So he's a, you know, he was a fitness model. He's on the cover of a bunch of magazines. Um, he's now a vegan, vegetarian. Vegan now, yeah. Yeah, yeah. he's full vegan. Um, he's an entrepreneur. He's from Hamilton. Um, he's a big part of the city. He's, he's he loves giving back. He's a humanitarian, uh, dog lover. So um, yeah, thanks so much for being here. Like I said, man, appreciate you having me. I'm excited to uh, chat and. Hear what you're up to and just uh, talk to the people. Awesome, man. So um, Jay is the co-founder of Heal, which is a, a health bar and a dog cafe on Concession Street in Hamilton. Um, tell us a bit about um, how you got into that. I know Concession Street was a big upswing of where it used to be and, and why you made the decision to go there. Um, and then I think we'll, we'll come back around to the fitness career that you, you know, made so much success with. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of buildup before Heal was kind of created, but essentially we built Heal to basically show all of our retail brands. So we had our dog treat company, and then we also have the retail company for the, the protein powders, the greens, and the nutrition. So we wanted to sh have showcase our products and show you how you could have them on like a, a, in your daily life. So, you know, sample the dog treats, bring your dog, hang out, enjoy yourself. Get, get a smoothie bowl, you know, yeah. infuse the protein into it. Um, and then also concession was kind of created because we thought there's a lot of pe places on James. We wanted to have somewhere on the mountain that people could go to, have a good time. It's honestly a beautiful street. The escarpment's right there. You just walk out to the escarpment a few feet and you can see all of Hamilton. And I just, I, I love that view. Yeah, dude. Um, and we just wanted to be a part of kind of making the street what we really think it should be. And we're, we're trying to be a part of that that curve. And we see a lot of new stores opening, a lot of people coming to the street now and, and kind of seeing how cool it really can be. And it's, it's, it's really nice to see that. Hamilton in general is kind of uh, doing that everywhere right now, but uh, we, we have a, you know, a soft spot for Concession Street and we think it's a good spot. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, going there in the last couple of years has been a huge transition. Um, we worked on a couple of different restaurants there, Poke. Mm -hmm. um, we were also in the candy store or Candy Works. Yep. yep. Um, that place blew me away. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty cool concept. There's a, there's a lot of great spots, Papa Leo's. Yeah. Uh, there's a few new spots opening now as well. Where Re Re Relay used to be, they're opening. Uh, okay. It's going to make a little patio, kind of a restaurant type vibe. I think it's opening in the spring. I think that we'll have the liquor license as well. So there'll be some more like nightlife on the street. Awesome. Um, we're the grocery store across the street from us. They're opening a, a bunch of units in there too. Uh, there's actually a, a new dog place that opened. I think it's dog training. Okay. Uh, right across the street from us. So it's kind of a, a, a good fit. Sure. Um, yeah. And anyways, a lot of exciting things happening there. And yeah, we're, we're excited for summer now. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. Um, we are uh, currently shooting right now, guys. We're, we're still with uh, COVID-19. So... We're keeping our social distancing, but uh, we, we got really... our six feet. Is it six feet? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I think we're okay. Yeah. yeah, that'd be all right. Um, but uh, you know, with everything going on, we really want to bring some positivity into what's happening. And mm -hmm. um, you know, Jay's just every time I see him, big smile on his face. He's always got something good going on. Um, so every time we've met, it's it's been uh, just an absolute pleasure of mine. So, you know, one of the things if you if you're you know from Hamilton and you're not from Hamilton, you haven't been down to Concession Street. The the change. Um, you know, it's a lot like Barton Street. And again, if you haven't been to Barton Street, you know, older buildings, a lot of rundown, a lot of vacancies. Um, so, you know, Jay and his, you know, his partner has really taken, I mean, I, my, my dad lived on Concession Street, so I knew that the park was there. You know, I know the views are on there. Uh, one of our website photos was actually, I got... Um, like the sunrise in the morning, we yep. got the van set up and that yeah. beautiful skyline. So I think it's really interesting to see the difference of like 
what you think is like taking a risk. Whereas like when you're from Hamilton and you create a good brand, um, you know, not that it doesn't matter where you are, but like, you know, I think your brand is so unique and you know, your, your message is there. Um, I think everyone's going to come to that. I know I do. I'm from downtown and I come up to see you guys all the time when we had uh, Cato. So, uh, yeah, I think it's unique to, to be able to kind of see that opportunity and, and really take it head on. And then also like, you know, stick to the grassroots of being from Hamilton and then, you know, reinvesting in your city. Right. No, I, I, we definitely love Hamilton. I, I lived in Toronto for six years and I, I had to come back because, you know, I have, I have a soft spot for the city. I think that, uh, the city Hamilton itself is an underdog and I like to be a part of that, that movement. Like people, you know, maybe think Hamilton's not the greatest spot, but they don't realize like w what's about to come. Yeah. You know, we're, we're, we're a movement and we're strong and you know, Hamilton's a great spot and, uh, proud to be here. So what, um, why were you in Toronto? So at the time for school and for, uh, the modeling stuff. So a okay. lot of the photo shoots and things I did were, were in Toronto and, it, at the yeah, at the time, it just made sense for like castings and whatever. They're mostly all downtown, and yeah. driving down there isn't uh, the funnest sometimes. So I, and and my school was just in Etobicoke. Oh, okay. So I lived like um, uh, on the west of of Toronto, kind of like King Street and King and Shaw was the intersection. It, it was good, but it's it's not Hamilton, man. I I, I, lo I like the people here. I like you know the the pace of life. I like. Having a big backyard and having space, and then the, the food scene here is great. Yeah, um, the vegan food scene is even better. And really? Yeah, there's a lot, a lot of cool stuff here, and I and happy to be a part of that. Yeah, you inspired me. Besides, um, besides the game changers, you were an, an inspiration to go uh, vegetarian. I'm not vegan yet, but vegetarian for me. And it's, uh, you know, it's cool to see. You know, I, I see a guy like you, muscles ready to go, and then you just, you know, we went to I think Sammy's in Ancaster, and he's vegan. I was like, oh man, I was like, this guy's not eating cheese. I was like, what's going on here? Where's he getting his protein from? But so it's interesting to see, uh, you know, to see it and open my eyes to uh, to kind of the lifestyle, mm -hmm. uh, the health brand. So. Tell us a bit about how you, you know, how you got into fitness to begin with, because um, I think it's it's interesting to see how people got started in their careers and what's kind of molded them to the position now. Because I think your story is phenomenal. I got I had an opportunity to sit with you a couple of weeks ago and, and hear it. So I thought like you know nothing better to get on the podcast and share your story with everybody. Yeah, for sure, man. So I guess yeah, starting way back, my my parents, I love them, but they didn't have the best understanding of what. A balanced diet was really like so um, when I was eight or nine years old I was I was pretty overweight and at the time going to school and just being bullied here and there comments kind of would get to you you know as, as a younger kid so my, my dream at the time like I'd go to the grocery store and I'd, I'd see a magazine cover and I'd be like oh man I want to I want to be like that guy so when I was I guess 10 I started working out quite a bit I got some dumbbells in my basement I was doing sit-ups and I had my my dad had like an old set from like I don't know the 70s or 80s <laughs> I actually still use them at my house now yeah they're like uh green and red and they have paint chipping off them they're just classic steel things. especially with what's going on right now eh? yeah they're, yeah I've been using them now a lot yeah. yeah um but yeah so I started using those and then throughout my my teens just kept kept working out and my goal at the time was like yeah I'm gonna look like that guy in, on the magazine one day so um, fast forward to, uh, college when I was like 19, uh, I was working out every day still, but at, my diet just was not on point. I was drinking a, a little bit too much and I just decided, okay, this is enough. If I want to achieve, you know, the goal I had as a kid, things are going to have to change and I'm going to have to, you know, sit, put a plan together and, you know, kind of execute. Yeah. So I, uh, did that over 12 weeks and then at the end of 12 weeks, you know, cut out each week I essentially just started cutting things out. So the first thing for me is I loved, you know, excess sugars, whatever, drinking. Um, and uh, so over those weeks, kind of cutting those things out, working out in the morning, working out at night when I had time, and then still doing school and whatever. Um, and after 12 weeks, got in shape and kind of like realized, okay, well, I can, I, I achieve this now. Let's, let's take it to the next level and actually accomplish my goal of getting on a cover. Um, so I sort of sort of set up a plan for like a two or three year plan. I wanted to get sponsored by a diet like a dietary supplement company that I'd always kind of wanted to be a part of, wow. and to get on the get on those covers. Um, and so yeah, that's that's kind of how it all all began. Um, 
And then when I was 25, I kind of accomplished those things. And then I told you the reason why I kind of wanted to stop doing it at that point. Yeah. But that was, that was the build up to kind of accomplishing all that. So what were the covers like, you know, just to, you know, give the viewers some context, like, you know, it's not just like a local cover magazine, like you were on, you know. Yeah. So, um, the first one I had was, I, th I think it was in Singapore. So that was the first one I had. Um, then I had a bunch in Germany. So the one, the men's fitness Germany covers were in, uh, <laughs> all over like the airports in Germany. Yeah, men, men's fitness, and yeah. men's health guys, yeah, yeah, like pretty so, big, uh, yeah, so I had pretty I mean, big magazine, five or six of those throughout the years. Uh, wow. they're in Switzerland, Germany, Luxembourg, all the airports, grocery stores and whatever. And that was, that was really cool. Uh, they thought I looked German. I'm not German, but I guess <laughs> the, the blonde hair and blue eyes kind of helped me out. Perfect. Um, and then I had Inside Fitness magazine, which is in Canada, so that was um, all like Shoppers Drug Marts and that's all awesome. those places. And yeah, so it was it was very cool. And and the reason why I really wanted to do it was I wanted to help other people to kind of show them that you know no matter what when you're younger like you you can really achieve whatever you put your mind to. And I wanted to try and give back and, and help younger people as well, like get into exercising and, and fitness. And I, I, I really, in addition to, you know, wanting to accomplish a goal I had as a kid, I really did want to kind of help other people, you know, be healthy as well. And as that process kind of went along, I started realizing that the thing I was promoting was the kind of the complete opposite of what I was trying to achieve. Yeah. And so I kind of told you that when we chatted before that, um, I kind of was like reflecting after a few covers and I was like, what am I doing this for just to kind of f feed my ego? Like, what is this all about? I'm not really helping anyone. My job is to work out. I work out like two or three times a day. My job is to eat and work out. The average person, you know, can't, can't be doing that. Yeah. They're going to buy this magazine and they're saying, okay, well, why don't I look like that? They have a family, kids, a, a real job. And it's just not, it's not a sustainable or real image to kind of, try and have people achieve so i started reflecting on that and that's why i kind of stepped away from that that field yeah so it was something that i got into for i think the right purpose but then as i kind of was sailing along in that in that lifestyle i kind of started reflecting a bit more on what i actually was doing and yeah yeah and i think like you know what it did for you as a kid like you know it gave you the the thought that i can do whatever i want you mm -hmm. got there right right um i think as entrepreneurs we always think the next best thing is going to make us happy or going to fulfill us. Right. Um, but that's what blew me away with your story is like, you know, you, you get to this point and I think, you know, not just entrepreneur life, but as, as people, we get to these points in our lives that we think are going to make us happy, whether it's a new car, that next house or uh, you know, new relationship. And, and you get there after all this hard work and you're like, wow, it's not, I didn't know that, this was going to be the feeling right you get fulfillment but it's, it's for such a short period of time yeah. and i think with entrepreneurs like you're always chasing that goal mm -hmm. um you know i think right now with, with everything that's going on like you know we, we get to this point and then all of a sudden it can be stripped away and i think it's it's that drive and that determination to succeed and push the envelope which is so interesting right so i think that's exactly what you said like the thing i take away from it that i i, I believe was the the greatest part of it all was just understanding that if I put my mind to something, I can accomplish whatever I want to do. Like at the beginning, everyone was saying like, you want to be on a magazine cover. That's stupid. Okay. Well, it's not a huge of a thing, but I no, was able to, massive. I was able to accomplish it. I, I did what I wanted to do yeah. and now it's time to move on to the next thing. So now what's the next thing I can accomplish? Yeah. And so that was, that was kind of a cool, a cool part of it all. And I, and obviously, my fitness background everyone loves arnold schwarzenegger yeah and uh like hi watching him and uh, pumping iron back in the days but he's always watched for inspiration and what i find so cool about him is that he came from you know he came from austria had could barely speak english came to the usa with really nothing got into the fitness thing obviously became quite popular and he's like okay well i gotta scale up what am i gonna do next and jump to what's my next platform that i'm gonna kind of jump to and so he went from the bodybuilding fitness thing used his platform there to then become an actor became an actor accomplished that now he's like okay now what am i going to do becomes a politician yeah then from there okay now what i'm going to do and now he's like a humanitarian he gives back he's actually um i think i don't think he's vegan but he's he follows a plant-based diet now and he promotes you know healthy living that whole movement and yeah i saw him on game changers and i was like well if arnold's doing yeah, it, yeah, I, was yeah. Like, yeah. I was like you know i was eating meat i was going to cumbrae's and, and dundas the two three times a week so um yeah it's a, 
man, if Arnold's doing that, what, you know, what excuse do I have? So it's interesting to see that. Yeah, it's cool just to see how he, he used each part of his life as building blocks to get to his next destination. Yeah. I think that's what I kind of look at fitness now being. It, it was what it was. It was great. I learned a lot. And my passion still, looking back, is, is nutrition um, and, and dietary supplements, which I've you know had a, a, a like since I was like a young kid, since I started fitness when I was like 10. I've always loved dietary supplement, supplements and how they can kind of, you know, help with your health you know if you're yeah. if you're not sufficient in certain vitamins and minerals or proteins go to the store and buy these and i've always found that cool and that was one of the reasons why i got into fitness as well so working for optum nutrition at the time was a goal they're a, a company based out of chicago that i worked for for quite some time that yeah. I, I learned quite a bit from um, and as well as cellucor i worked for them for a few years um, just different expos and traveling around and kind of talking about their products learning how they they made things and it's also kind of led me to where I am now, where I, I, I kind of saw the things that I didn't understand why they weren't doing. Like one thing, why is everyone using black plastic containers? Uh, they're not uh, recyclable. Yeah. They just get thrown into the landfills. And why is no one using biodegradable packaging? Why is everyone using artificial sweeteners? And why is everyone so focused on using whey protein? Um, and, and so those are kind of things that I had in the back of my head while I was working for them. And I saw the consumers coming to the booth asking us, Hey, why you, why don't you have a plant-based protein and why don't you not use sucralose anymore? And I was like, yeah, I don't know why we're not doing that. So I decided to start creating my own products. And after being able to do the fitness stuff, it's like, okay, well, why not just make your own thing? Yeah. yeah. So, and I think, yeah, so interesting. So was there like an epiphany there or? Well, like I was said, it gradual or did you see an opportunity and then, you know, dig a little bit deeper to get more information? It was definitely gradual. And when I was working for Optimum too, the whole reason why I decided to go back to school for a, a degree in marketing is because I said, okay, well, if you have a degree in marketing, you could be the marketing person for Canada uh, for Optimum. And so I went back to school to do that. Oh, wow. And so I was already kind of gearing up to do something within nutrition Okay. Uh, for my, my long-term plan. And, um, then I just decided, well, why would I work for somebody else when I can just do it myself uh, the way I want it to be done? Yeah. Um, and so that's kind of how I how I I decided to go. And realistically, I think it's just best suited for my personality. Like my dad's an entrepreneur, his dad was an entrepreneur, and his dad was an entrepreneur when he moved here from Italy. So it's kind of like our whole family on my dad's side. Like they all kind of just do their own thing. My sister does her own thing. My aunt does. My uncle's like big in real estate. Kind of just build his own. His real estate's uh, I think quite large up towards Caledon and Mississauga. So like oh, wow. our whole family's kind of all done just whatever they wanted to do. It's like, yeah, <laughs> this is what I'm gonna do. I'll just make it happen. So yeah, it's good. Man. It's just like it, it's in my DNA, I think. Um, so that's I think that's probably why I decided to go that route. Yeah. Um, and then also I just feel like I can help people with these products. Like I I, I know that there's there's opportunity and space for higher quality nutrition products to come to market that are actually going to be beneficial for people from a health standpoint, um, be cruelty free, be better for the environment and, um, also, you know, achieve the same results. Yeah. What were one of your, what's one of your biggest challenges that you've faced in terms of getting to that next level? Um, with like, you know, time management where you're working for a company, but also doing your own thing. Um, you know, how do you make time in a day to, you know, you're still in great shape, obviously you're eating well, you know, what do you give an entrepreneur that's not in the, you know, cause realistically, yes, you're in the fitness and the health space, but like, you know, you're still working, I'm sure a ton of hours a day. You got a ton of challenges that come up every day. We don't like to use stress around here, but we say, yeah. cha say challenges. Yeah, yeah, challenge is a better way to uh, position it, I think. You're yeah. Right. Um, uh, I, I would say, obviously, this is one thing I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, I have to improve on. It's just my organization. Yeah. Sometimes it's just, it's just not being scattered and trying to kind of just plan out your day, wake up early, like just really simple things. It's, it's like working out. Yeah. Uh, it's actually quite simple. It's just getting down and actually doing it. So working out and getting in shape is, is really straightforward. It's like you just go to the gym, eat properly, eat a balanced diet. Don't do any fad diets. Just... Make sure it's your macronutrients are balanced, have micronutrients vitamin, and your vitamins and minerals and everything, and you'll probably be okay. It's the same thing. It's like, yeah. you know the basics. Get a good sleep. Wake up early. Yeah. Schedule your day and just don't procrastinate and get it done. It, yeah. it's, to me, I think that's really it. Like, it's just 
and also like work hard. Like that's that's a given. You know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, in all those scenarios, it's always a given, but it's really the same the same uh, kind of setup, right? Yeah, I mean, totally. So, what is the what are the next steps for you? I mean, heels been going off great. Every time I come in there, it's it's jamming. You got the dogs in the back. Um, you know, we were fortunate enough to bring. Um, uh, we were fostering a dog, and we brought Cato in. Uh, uh, Jay was able to give him some treats and keep him calm. We got, yeah, it was we, awesome. got a, we actually got a photo. Which, it was awesome uh, having him there. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't normally get <laughs> doesn't normally calm down for. Um, but yeah, what's what's next? Like, I mean, he all seems to be going great. Um, is it another location? Is it some more product? What you, what's on the agenda? For right now, I think we'll just leave Heal and its location right now. The main purpose behind Heal was to have a a community locate a location in the community where everyone can go and kind of see our products. Um, hang out, you know, bring their dog, relax, try a smoothie bowl. Uh, but the, the main focus, I think, uh, right now is going to be our nutrition company that we're about to launch. Okay. Uh, so that's going to be the plant-based protein powders. Awesome. We're going to be doing bars, and we're just on the verge of uh, finalizing a deal, hopefully, um, to get that through, you know, all the grocery stores and nutrition chains across Canada. Oh, that's and the amazing. US and the US will be next too. So that's kind of been the main And that's all plant based. It's all plant based, yeah, exactly. Wow. So so yeah, I've been quite excited about that and hopefully in the summertime we'll have all those products out to market. And then on the side of that we're also doing stuff in the cannabis space. So obviously the cool. stocks haven't been the the greatest right now, but we're uh, hoping to launch another product this spring. Uh, I can tell the brand name is called Grenade. Oh, cool. And we're going to be doing pre-rolls and uh, like bags of flour. And then we're going to be moving on to doing some uh, infused like fruit roll-ups and fruit chews and that kind of thing. <laughs> so those will, those will be the next, uh, the next things in the docket for the summertime. And then obviously Heal will continue building upon. Uh, if it makes sense, we will expand on it. There's we have kind of considered it, but right now we just want to focus on perfecting that one spot. Yeah. And then once we have like everything, you know, down pat, uh, and, and we'll probably look upon maybe expanding elsewhere. Yeah. I mean, it's a great brand. It's a great product. If you guys have an opportunity to check it out, it's on concession streets, big, beautiful, big sign, um, with some, you know, roll, will they roll up windows. Up they, the front? uh, they kind of just like, I don't know what you call them, like accordion style. They basically just pull out and fold in. Yeah, so the summertime, um, it's awesome. To, yeah. You know, it's kind of like you're sitting on the patio, bring the dogs. Um, it's dog friendly. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's great, guys. And, I mean, I just, I love the fact that, you know, when, uh, you know, let's talk a little bit about how much doubt people had in you when you were making those decisions. Like, you know, heel, dog cafe, concession. Like, you know, it sounds great now that it's open and it's doing well, but what about the doubt at the beginning? I am probably the most optimistic person around and like really I, I don't I, I should probably should listen to people more but people tell me things I usually don't care yeah like if I'm gonna do something I'm gonna do it because I want to yeah there's a few people whose opinions I really value but yeah. a lot of time there's just opinions that aren't aren't really valid so like for example if you gave me an opinion I would listen to you because you, <laughs> you know what you're talking about but for the most part it's like if, if I decide I'm gonna do something I'm gonna do it regardless so I love um, it. There, there were some people who were like, well, you got too much stuff on the go. You're going to be spread too thin. And it's probably valid. But at the same time, I, I'm happy with what we've built. And it all kind of flows within what we're trying to do is, you know, help promote nutrition and health in, in Canada and Hamilton and kind of use us as our hub and then expand out from there. Yeah. Um, I, I think there's, especially with everything going on right now, there's, there's a need for more health and wellness products, uh, information. And a place where people want to go and have health food. Yeah. Ma make it cool and trend trendy. Bring your dog. Like, there's definitely room for that. And we kind of want to, you know, continue building upon that that mission. And who knows where it'll take us. But so far, you know, we're having a good time. And <laughs> we've met some awesome people. And the community seems to enjoy our, our, our stuff. So, um, yeah, so far so good. It's awesome, man. And so um, just to kind of wrap up here, what... Um, you know, what advice would you give to the younger generation coming up? Um, a lot of the stuff that we talk about and the, you know, the big message that we're trying to get across in the podcast is just making that connection point to, you know, the people that might not think it's attainable or, or might listen too much to the people that are around them that might not think they're capable. Um, you know, I had a lot of that when I was, uh, you know, starting my business and, you know, not all of it was negative, right? People just care and they didn't, like like you said, didn't want you to stretch too thin. 
So what would you, what advice would you give to someone that's, you know, passionate, but maybe a little, you know, fearful of, of making a jump? Like, you know, I think you have to take risks no matter what, like if you're going to just wait around and just ho hope that things will be given to you, it's, it's never going to happen. You just have to go out and do it. If you fail, you fail, you learn. I've tried so many things that have, have not worked. Um, and because of those things, I, I've learned more each time that have kind of set me up to be able to execute better the next time. Um, and I, I honestly think that's, that's really the key to this whole thing. Like you're going to make mistakes. The only way to learn is to try. Yeah. Um, and I'm continually, you know, failing at certain things that I'm trying, but as I'm going through that, that process, I'm, I'm learning and coming up with new ideas and new ways to solve those problems that maybe caused me to not, you know, get through the last time. Right. Yeah. Um, so, and then again, I, I don't know, we talked about this too, outside of, you know, entrepreneurship and well, not outside of it, the way schools are set up right now, I think the trades are a huge thing that maybe still aren't being pushed. Mm -hmm. And you create made a an awesome decision by by going that route. Um, and I think more people probably should be getting into the trades. I don't know if you you probably agree with me on that one as well. But yeah, it was it was a weird thing that when like back when I was in school, I was like, okay, well you guys got to go to university or else like, you guys what are you guys gonna do? And then the people who went to the trades are all doing great. Look at yourself. Yeah. People who went to university took, you know, humanities or so social science and they're all just not sure what to do. So I think like if you're a kid and you don't know what to do, if I had to go back and I was interested in the trades, I would 100% create my own business like you're doing and and go from there. Yeah. And like I think it's a, it comes down to, you know, education and um, coming up with some resources. And I think it's just so interesting to, you know, that's why we're doing this. Ask the question, guys. Like, you know. I would have thought that you're, you know, just a, a meathead if I, I met you on, from a, a magazine cover. And that was my, you know, being naive when I was younger, right? Um, and now it's like, you know, you're asking these questions, and you're meeting these amazing people and you're finding out like, wow, like, you know, he's, he used to be a fat kid and, you know, now he wants to give back and, and promote things. And I just think it's so interesting to be able to, um, once you get over that hurdle of like being, like having fear to ask a question or maybe uh, ask for that coffee or, or take that guy for lunch or that, that woman for lunch um, to make that connection, I think it just, you know, opens your eyes to so much. Yeah, no, that's for sure. Unfortunately, yeah, the magazines do come ac across as a certain way. For me, it was, it was just a, a, a goal of mine to achieve that. I wasn't trying to show off or yeah, whatever of it was for me it was like as a kid it's like that's what i wanted to do so it's like hey i gotta i gotta i gotta make that goal i've gotta make my younger self happy right yeah and so that's kind of what the inspiration was for doing that and it kind of obviously like even people i've met since then have been like dude i thought you were gonna be like you know all stuck up and whatever but it's definitely not about that it's about promoting yeah. health and that's at the end of the day that's always what i've been about yeah uh, and and finding my way throughout the years as to how to do that in, in the proper way. And I think I've kind of figured out a balance now. So yeah, I still work out, but it's not, uh, it's not <laughs> you're like, okay. I mean, you're supposed to be working out. Yeah, yeah. It's more about, you know, living a healthy lifestyle. That's awesome. So thank you so much, Jay, for coming on. Um, guys, we want to, you want to make it a thing. It's, it's why not me? Why not now? Right. And, um, you know, what Jay said is the same thing. You might fail, but the message here is just to, just to try, just to go after it. Um, keep focused. So um, thanks so much for sharing, Jay. I think your story is amazing. I appreciate you having me here. It was a, it was a fun time. Yeah. So um, you can find him at uh, at on uh, his company, Social Heal Wellness, or his personal social is uh, Jay Zicato. Um, all his stuff will be in the bio. If you're on Concession Street, you got a puppy, or you just want to walk in. It's, yeah, come it's by and say hi. <laughs> Great to meet you all. Yeah. Um, so thanks so much, Jay. Thank you. Take care.